There we go. Everybody see that? All right, so I posted this on Twitter. This is a list of... Um, this is a list of threats to the United States of America. It's not an exhaustive list, and I haven't listed here um, ideologies. I've only listed movements, institutions, companies, things that people think of as threats to the United States of America. I listed this on, on Twitter. And I said, okay, I, I want people to rank them. And if you look, I think, let me see if I can get you this. Uh, let me do this. One second, one second, one second, one second, one second. Yeah, you see there's some rankings. I took up Twitter that people rank them uh, in terms of what they think the ranking should be. So you've got, um, you've got TikTok. I thought that would be funny. Um, China, big tech all considered, you know, all priorities for the Republicans and Democrats. Uh, TikTok, Schumer came out and said, we got to get rid of TikTok. TikTok obviously is a massive threat to American freedom. China, obviously, everybody thinks is a threat to American freedom. Big tech, everybody agrees. The whole Congress was attacking big tech. Universities, don't know if everybody agrees. Antifa, well, certainly the right thinks. Democratic Party, the right thinks that. Trump, left thinks that. Republican Party, left thinks that. Russia. Not sure anybody thinks that, or maybe everybody thinks that. Hard to tell. Uh, certainly not Trump. Illegal immigrants. Everybody in the right thinks they're a threat to America. Trade and outsourcing. Well, the right thinks that's an, uh, a threat to America. Wall Street. I think everybody thinks Wall Street is a, a threat to America. BLM. Well, certainly the right thinks that. White supremacists. Certainly the left thinks that. Religion. Certainly the. Well, I don't know if anybody thinks that. Will, uh, national conservatism. I think I'm the only person who thinks that's a threat. Crime, is it a threat to American freedom? Or did we always have it? Anyway, um, Biden, well, certainly a lot of you think he's a major threat, and so do I, to America. Uh, welfare state, threat to America or savior? I think, again, objective is maybe some free market people think it's a threat, but very few. Government schools, I don't know who thinks that's a threat. Islamists and Islam, oh, it, this used to be number one. Number one, absolutely. It's faded a little bit. Now China, illegal immigrants, and TikTok have replaced it. Islam, I remember arguing with people. Islam was going to destroy America. The Muslims were going to take over. The number one threat, the number one danger. The, no, it turns out not so much. COVID, big threat. Fed, Federal Reserve, ooh, massive threat. So what do you guys think? Islam has lost its place as the number one threat. I, what do you think? What, what would you put number one? What would you put number one as the biggest long-term, not tomorrow, long-term threat to, uh, to America? Uh, somebody says 20. Government schools. I'd say it's up there. I wouldn't put it number one. Because what makes government schools? What makes government schools possible? Or put it this way, what makes government schools as bad as they are? Something is worse than government schools. Uh, for, uh, he says number two is four, so four is number two, that's universities, and uh, national conservatism is number three. All right, not bad. I would, I would not in that order, but, but close. Uh, William Swick said Democrats. Yeah, right. Uh, Burke says number four, universities, all right. Kyle says 15, that's religion. Uh, Jonathan says religion is number one. Uh, Steve says 19. Uh, Andrew says number one is democracy. Oh, democracy is a good one to add to the list. Let's add democracy. Democracy. Democracy is certainly up there, but not number one. Far from it. Property right violation number one. No, not even close. Um, da -da 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 -da. Democrats and Republicans... Oh, this is not my ranking, not my ranking, not my ranking. This is just a list, just made a list. So uh, COVID is not number 22, nothing here is this particular number. This is just a list, right? Just a list that I made, and, you know, I'm open to ranking. Uh, Gil says number four. Uh, Rock says property rights. That's right, I, I had that already. Uh, Derek is reminding me to like. Don't forget to like the show before you leave. We should have 200 likes right now, easily. If you guys were, were watching the show, like it. 
Uh, and then, of course, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to use Super Chat here. Somebody says number 23, the Federal Reserve. No, not even close. Why do we have a Federal Reserve? Who, who led us to Federal Reserve? Public intellectuals. I had public intellectuals and took it off. Okay, I'm going to add public intellectuals. Public intellectual. Don't pay attention to my inability to type. Um, okay, public intellectuals. Uh, okay, so we got 23. We got num princess number three, my king. I don't know what that is. Num four, so four, number six. Six is what? Democratic Party. No way. Far down the list. Number one, university is number one. Uh, 26, Green New Deal. I'd, I'll add Green New Deal, but yeah, it's not going to be very high on the list. Green New Deal. Uh, what else? Number four. All right, well, we're getting a, a bit of a, I wouldn't say consensus, but a, a majority here. Politicians, let's just, just say pol Democrats and politicians. No, politicians, politicians are the product of the thing that is worse than politicians. The Federal Reserve is a product of the thing worse than politicians. Altruism is a, is a set of ideas. We're not including ideas here. We're including institutions and movements. Number four, number 20. What's 20? Government schools. The government schools, I think, is number two, not number one. Uh, irrationality, again, that's an idea. Certainly irrationality is number one, but uh, irrationality, mysticism, altruism, all the way up there. Number 26 is the biggest threat, Green New Deal. No, it's not. It's far from the biggest threat. Number 27, anime fury boys on TikTok. Well, I think that's covered by TikTok. James says 20, government schools, government schools, not quite. Um, all right, a few of you get where I'm going at least. Okay, there's, to me, there's one number one that's overwhelming because it sets the standards for everything else. The number one enemy of freedom in the United States, the biggest threat to freedom long term for the United States are the universities. Uh, the universities are number one by far because who trains the teachers who teach in the government schools? Who figures out the new math gibberish that they're taught? Who figures out sight C and, and rejects, um, rejects phonics? Who figures out all the nonsense, the, 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 all the BS? Ooh, now I'm guilty of Trump derangement syndrome because I said the universities are the biggest threat. Wow. It's kind of weird. All right. Universities are the biggest threat in my view. Um, second, number two, after universities, you'll see a theme here. Long-term threat to the United States, to freedom, and everything good in this country is government schools. Look, if you get, if you have under your control the government schools and the universities, you're done. You've got them till the age of 18. And it doesn't in the end matter if the, what ends the world is religion or what ends the world is the Green New Deal or what ends the world is, is, uh, is national conservatism or, or the Democratic Party or Antifa. All of those will have been trained by the universities and the government schools. And they produce both left and right. They produce the extremes. And why do they produce the extreme left and extreme right, which are basically the same collectivistic, mystical, um, altruistic, non-thinking nihilists? Well, nihilists on the left and author authoritarians on both. Why? Well, because what do the government schools and the universities teach us? The reality is not real. There is no absolutes. There are no principles. Not even in mathematics, it turns out if you saw the 2 plus 2 equals 5 stuff. I, I mean, who comes up with 2 plus 2 equals 5? Doron asks, and yeah, universities do. If you, if you cripple the human mind when it's young, when it's just coming out, when it's just engaging with the world and starting to try to think for itself, then what are you going to get? you're going to get disaster. So by far, education is the most important thing in the world. Politics is not number one, two, three, four, five, six. Democratic Party is way down on the list, as is the Republican Party, as is Trump, as are the others, because they are products. Products of what? Products of government schools. The Fed is a product. Why haven't we abandoned the Fed given its total and absolute failures? 
because we're not trained to think that way. We're trained to accept. We're trained to confuse. What else is a threat? And now there's some things that are just not threats, right? TikTok is not a threat. Illegal immigrants are not a threat. Trade is not a threat. Wall Street's not a threat. So let's, 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 uh, let's take the things that are not threats. We'll italicize those. That's not a threat. Big tech is not a threat. Right? So we see what we're left with. Uh, illegal immigrants is not a threat. And you'll see that it's interesting that all the things that are not a threat, Wall Street is not a threat, or well, BLM is a threat. So BLM, we should, I tell us. Um, all the things that are not threats are the things our two political parties want to talk about, are the things they want to scare you over. Let's see. All right, everything else is a threat. All right. I think number three might be public intellectuals. The thinkers. Ooh, the courts is a good one. I don't know where I'd put them because I think the courts, uh, courts are the, still a place of sanity in America. Still, relatively speaking, relatively speaking. Still bad, relatively speaking. I think it's, it's the intellectuals. It's universities, government schools, public intellectuals. It's the, it's the uh, religion. It's the national conservatives. It's BLM. It's white supremacists. It's the ideas. I don't even think Antifa is that important. Antifa is probably under BLM because it's such a marginal group. In any other world, they'd be rid of easily. And there's no way Antifa goes mainstream. Right? And only then, only after you take all these other groups, all these groups, do you get to Trump, Biden, Republicans, Democrats. And only then do you get to the political issues like welfare state, Federal Reserve. And only at the very bottom do I put Islamists, China, Russia, because they're not a threat to the United States. The real threat to, to freedom in America is America. The real threat to freedom in America is what they teach at our universities. The real threat to America is not cybersecurity. The real threat to America are the ideas, the egalitarianism, the altruism, the collectivism, the mysticism, the postmodernism, and the fact that our schools, our government schools, don't teach kids to think, don't teach kids math, don't teach kids English, don't teach kids literature. That's what's destroying America. It's that rot from within that is ideological, that is philosophical that is pervaded by the intellectuals. The fact is, it is the intellectuals that are destroying America. The intellectual elite, both left and right. Whether at the New York Times, Paul Krugman's of the world, or, among, or at the American Conservative Magazine. Or the, right, uh, the, the various different new right magazines. The battle for America is not a political battle. It's not about Republicans or Democrats. They're just pawns in the game. The real influences, the real determinants of the fate of this country, the real determinants of the future of this country, of the shape this country takes, of the ideas this country adopts, are the intellectuals. That's why the battle is an intellectual, philosophical battle. That's why the most important voices we have are the intellectual voices. It's why you guys should go and support the Einman Institute. You should support Don Watkins. You should support Alex Epstein. You should support the intellectuals, the public intellectuals working out there to reverse these trends. You should support Greg Salamieri at his new position in, at the University of Texas, Tara Smith, and any intellectuals out there who is speaking out, who is working against the ideas that are destroying this country, 
That is the battle. That is the war. That is everything. Screw politics. Forget about it. You de- take all that time you devote to defending Trump or attacking Biden or reverse or whatever and spend it instead on defending ideas, on attacking ideas. Yeah, Sam Harris counts. Sam is a public intellectual who, while does some good, does some bad. And the bad he does is big time because he undermines free will which is about the worst thing you can undermine, ever. So, a big reason for me to do this is just to illustrate at least my view that the real enemy here is our ideas. And if you want to fight, fight for ideas. Fight at the level of ideas. Stop this obsession, I mean, the obsession with politics. I mean, so, so many of you disagree with me on Trump. Fine, who cares? I know there are a lot of people who disagree with me on Trump. But if you care about the future of this country, you've got to fight his bad ideas. Even if you think he's better than Biden and you'll vote for him no matter what. Great. Do that. Vote for Trump. But fight his bad ideas. Don't be apologists for him. And then promote good ideas. Thank you, Lester. Promote great ideas. Promote the ideas of reason, of egoism, of individual rights, of individualism, of capitalism. Don't spend all your time attacking Biden and the left unless you're promoting something good, something positive, something worthwhile. The battle is an intellectual battle, a philosophical battle, ideological battle. You will lose. If you obsess about politics. Politics doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who gets elected long term. Well, it matters, but it doesn't matter that much. What matters is are the ideas that become prevalent in this country. And those of you who support this show, don't support it because of my, you know, my ability to sway the vote one way or the other. You support this show... You support this show because you know that I promote your ideas. I promote your philosophy. And I spend my time talking about philosophical ideas. Even in the discussion of Lebanon, I'm giving you facts, history, all in the context of freedom is good. What they're doing in Lebanon is a disaster because it's anti-freedom. Wow, I've got... How did Ned Stark enter the conversation in the chat? So if you, care about, if you care about the future of this country and you think objectivism is on the right path, the ideas are the right ideas, then promote those of us, help those of us who are speaking out for it and you need to pick up the mantle and support it and advocate for it yourself. That's how we'll change the world. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not want to give in to today's cult of despair cynicism and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the role of the collectivist brute. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want, to see, I want to see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this. Uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, 
the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share and uh, you can support the show at yourrunbookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if, you, even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified, right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please. <laughs>